Good morning, everyone. My name is Frank Camito. I am the CEO of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. On behalf of CHTA, I would like to welcome all of you to our Learning Tools webinar, The Facts About Zika and How to Mitigate Its Impact. For housekeeping items, this presentation is being recorded. You will be able to have access to the uh, a video of it, as an audio recording, as well as the PowerPoint presentation and additional support materials, which we will reference to uh, throughout the presentation. 24 hours after the webinar is over on our website, and I believe it will be posted as well on, on other websites. The presentation will last 35 minutes. After the presentation, there will be 25 minutes for Q&A. You can submit your questions by typing them into the webinar's chat room. As we all know, the Zika virus has come upon, upon our region quite quickly, and the, and the Western Hemisphere quite quickly, and has required a co coordinated response. CHTA, CTO, and CARPA commenced the uh, coordination on this early this month as we saw signs of it becoming an emerging health matter for the region and co began to coordinate our efforts. What you're seeing today is an outcome of a number of coordinated efforts that are underway uh, by the industry to address and mitigate the impact of the problem. So without any further uh, uh, for the comment on my part, I'd like to introduce the president of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, Carolyn Trubetskoy, to offer some welcoming remarks. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I would also like to um, thank our speakers this morning for sharing um, information with us. Uh, we have uh, with us today from CARFA. Uh, Dr. Lisa Indar, um, Dr. James Hospitalis, and Dr. Karen Paulson Edwards. From uh, CTO, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, we have on the call, uh, on the webinar, you Riley, and you have already heard from Frank Comito, who is the CEO of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. Um, you will first um, have a presentation by CARFA followed by a um, presentation, um, uh, presentation from Mr. Riley, and then Frank Comito will uh, speak um, on behalf of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. As we all know, this um, uh, issue has come upon us very, very quickly and uh, has, in fact, dominated uh, the news globally. Um, CNN this morning has referred to the Zika virus as spreading explosively around the Americas, and the World Health Organization has set up a Zika emergency team, and uh, as you can see, we really have to work together, not just the private sector, but if ever there was a need for the public and private sector to work together and, and come up with a decisive and robust action plan, it is now. So without further ado, let me please hand over to our representatives from CAFA. Thank you. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Good morning, everyone uh, who is taking part in this webinar. My name is James Foster Alex. I'm the Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency. CAFA, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, is an uh, institution of the Caribbean community with 24 countries read on the similar footprint of EPO and EHDA. And our mission is to promote health and prevent disease, protect health uh, through working with member states, working with partner organizations. We have an important convening and collaborating role, a leadership role in the monitoring of disease and in the mounting of appropriate <laughs> programs, the monitoring of those, and we support those with communications and so on. So that's in, in very short uh, a bit about CARFA. Some, if you've never heard of us before, we're a bit like uh, the CDC for the Caribbean. We're headquartered in Trinidad and Tobago with offices in St. Lucia and Jamaica. We've got a bit of about 100 staff, uh, and that's us in a nutshell. I would like to uh, hand over a bit now on the Zika story to Dr. Karen Colton, our, our medical entomologist. We uh, at CARFA consider the issue of Zika or the threat of Zika to be a potentially serious challenge with significant health 
and the economic impact, uh, particularly to declining tourism arrivals. Um, the situation that we're in today and uh, the emotional content of this disease with the birth effect and potential as well neurological complications means we, we have to very carefully uh, go forward with the prevention and uh, positive messages to minimize economic and reputational damage to, to the Caribbean. And I'm saying that as the head of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, uh, uh, that, that we're in this together, and that's why the, 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 the seminar is a fruit, one of the fruits of the partnership that we have with CPO and CHDA uh, signed in, in, in 2014. Then we do face a significant threat. It follows on the background of having had dengue for years and chikungunya more recently. This has come upon us again. Although it come apparently suddenly, we have been preparing for this, and there are networks and systems of regional public health that are designed for responding to these situations, which we are going to towards the end of the seminar. Uh, there are effective prevention measures. It requires a coordinated response, and uh, many have to be involved and it is our intent to get that response from the highest level in the Caribbean and to take advantage of, to turn this into an opportunity as well to really move, move the needle on mosquito control where these things are spreading the diseases they can start to have an economic livelihood of our region. I hand over now to Dr. Karen Paulson to talk a bit more about, specific about the disease and the health impact and transmission. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Hosted Good afternoon. Now Zika, as we know, it is an emerging multi-borne disease or virus, and it was first identified in Uganda in monkeys in 1947, specifically in the Zika forest, hence the name of the virus. And it was first identified in humans in 1952, and there were small outbreaks reported prior to 2007. In 2007, there have been outbreaks in several islands of the Pacific region and in Africa. And the virus entered the Americas in 2014 when the first local case of transmission was detected in Easter Island, Chile. In May 2015, local transmission was reported in Brazil, and since then, the virus has spread to several countries and territories in the Americas, including the Caribbean. The Zika is transmitted primarily by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which is the same mosquito which transmits chikungunya, dengue, and yellow fever. And this mosquito is presently present in all our countries, which is why there is a big concern. Mosquitoes become infected when they bite someone who has this virus, and during the first week of infection, and in turn, the mosquitoes spread the disease by biting others. The symptoms of Zika are similar to other mosquito-borne diseases such as dengue and chikungunya and include fever, skin rashes which normally begin in the face and then spread to other parts of the body, conjunctivitis, headache, muscle and joint pains. Now we must note that only one in four persons who become infected with Zika virus may develop infection symptoms. Sorry which are usually mild and last for about two to seven days, but serious complications can sometimes occur in persons who are infected. And in 2013, during outbreaks of Zika in French Polynesia, um, health authorities reported potential neurological and immune complications of Zika disease, which include guillain barre syndrome and meningitis. And in 2015 in Brazil, late 2015, the health authorities detected an increase in neurological symptoms and an increase in cases of microcephaly in babies. And this coincided with the, the um, Zika virus outbreak which they were having. And as that January 23rd this year, then 3,500 cases of microcephaly and microcephaly means that they're seeing smaller than normal head size in babies. And there have been 46 related deaths reports in areas where Zika is circulating. This, of course, is what is giving cause for concern, as the evidence points to a potential link between Zika virus infection and microcephaly in babies born to mothers 
who are infected with the virus during pregnancy. Now, point to note is that we still do not understand the relationship between Zika virus and microcephaline babies, but the possibility that there is a link gives us re reason for public health concerns. Investigations are ongoing into understanding the relationship and other potential causes of the increase in the number of cases of microcephaly, as there is yet no definitive link between the two. The only way to diagnose um, Zika is through a laboratory test, and the test that gives us the best confirmation is to what's called PCR, the molecular method, PCR short for polymer polymerase chain reaction. There is no vaccine or treatment available for Zika infection. People who come down sick with the virus should ensure that they get plenty of rest, drink enough fluids to prevent dehydration, and treat pain and fever with common medicines such as paracetamol or acetaminophen. If symptoms worsen, they should seek medical care and advice. Aspirin and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen should be avoided until dengue can be ruled out to reduce the risk of hemorrhage. As Dr. Hospitali said earlier, this virus is new to the Caribbean and so our populations have no immunity. So in conjunction with that, we have the presence of the vector all around. And so mosquitoes and their breeding sites pose a significant risk factor for Zika virus infection. These mosquitoes, it is just the mosquitoes, are aggressive daytime biters that prefer to bite people. They live in and around domestic environments. And they prefer to lay their eggs in containers with standing water. And so the main means for prevention and control lies in reducing the infestation levels of the mosquitoes through source reduction. And this is through the removal of breeding sites and also through reducing contact between mosquitoes and people. So the source reduction includes things like securely covering water barrels, placing new tires in areas where they can, cannot collect water, emptying flower vases, and so on. And CARFA is challenging the public to conduct inspections, not only in and around your home, but wherever you, ha you, you, you have to go, um, whether it is in your offices, public health facilities, um, hotels, and so on, in order to identify the breeding sites or potential breeding sites that are around in an attempt to remove them to reduce the infestation levels of the mosquitoes. Persons can also protect themselves from mosquito bites by using insect repellent, wearing long sleeve clothes, preferably light color, that covers as much as of the body as possible using physical barriers such as screens, closed doors and windows, and sleeping on their mosquito net. Special attention and help should be given to those who may not be able to protect themselves adequately, such as young children, the sick, or elderly. So in view of this, we are issuing a challenge for persons to practice zero tolerance of mosquitoes in and around um, different facilities in an effort to stem or to slow the spread of Zika through the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Pass over to Dr. Lisa Indar, who will talk a bit about the US CDC alerts and the coordination of the public private sector response. Thank you, everyone, and good, good morning. Um, so while travel is a major economic signal for, for the Caribbean, it also contributes to disease spread. And because of this, uh, when we have high and increasing levels of visitor arrivals, like in the Caribbean, it increases the potential for visitors and locals transmitting or acquiring diseases from each other. Because of this, they have had concern and alert and specific measures for travelers um, that tend to result, such as um, the CDC alert from um, the CDC travel and the advisory alerts, um, and also alerts from Pago and WHO and um, from the Caribbean Public Health Agency. Um, in terms of where Zika has been found, uh, Dr. Fulton uh, mentioned has been it is now in many countries. Uh, so to date, um, the current uh, number on the CDC website is 24 countries. Um, 
And if I may list some of those that children may want to know, Barbados, Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, French Guiana, Guadalupe, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Martinique, Mexico, Panama, Paraguay, Puerto Rico, St. Martin, Suriname, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Venezuela. So those are the countries in the Americas. And other than that, it has uh, the concerned people in Samoa and in Cape Verde. To date, while these countries have had local concerned cases, in the U.S. to date, no local transport of visa cases have been reported in continental U.S. But cases have been reported in travelers. And I know this has been a question why the travel advisory for these countries and not the U.S. And this is the main reason because no local transit cases have been reported in continental U.S. Um, they have been locally transmitted cases in the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, which is the various part of U.S. Um, so one of the big reasons for the CDC and uh, travel writing is that we tend to advise on um, if you need to do their health and talk about this to their um, to their their um, to their citizens is the risk then of uh, imported cases. Uh, these imported cases can also result in local spread of virus and in some areas in the US. So on Friday, January 22nd, last Friday, um, the Center for Disease Control actually upgraded the warning for selected countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. The CDC travel notices are really designed to inform travelers and clinicians about current health issues related to specific destinations, especially those who are in a risk to the U.S., and they are normally three types. Level one is called a watch level. And um, it, it just says practice usual precautions, so therefore you can travel as normal. And um, in, in level two, and level one is just noted by a green notation. Uh, level two, noted by a yellow notation, is on a red level. And this requires practice enhanced precautions. And level three, which is noted by red, it is requiring avoiding non-essential travel. On Friday, well, on Friday, January 22nd, the travel and visitors to the countries in the Caribbean and Latin America that I just mentioned are graded to level two. So that, this mitigation actually recommends special precaution for pregnant women who advise to consider postponing travel and for women of childbearing age who are planning to become pregnant but they are then advised to consult with the doctor before travel. You could have probably, and as Dr. Fulton said, we still haven't we created that, uh, we still have not uh, confirmed that definite association link between the virus and uh, infection and pregnancy. So all of this is due to a probable association between the virus, infection, and pregnancy, and adverse people outcomes. In addition, all travelers have age as usual to strictly adhere to multiple precise precautions. So to switch here, what is CARPA doing in terms of addressing the impact of VICA on tourism? And CARPA 2 is integrated regional tourism and health program and in collaboration with CTO and TG, we have an MOE for executing uh, Travel related health issues and addressing travel and health issues. We are taking a very holistic and a very aggressive approach to travel related Zika and other mosquito borne infections. Uh, prevention and control that includes the following upgraded guidelines for Zika prevention in travelers in hotels and guest houses for circulation in hotels and other tourism and lodging. And, um, Trans, uh, Mr. Committee did actually uh, indicate that his guidelines, which we put out a few weeks ago, was quickly to the hotels, um, both for the travelers as well as for hotels and other tourist lodges. Uh, we also have an agreement with um, the Cruise Line International to um, distribute these guidelines as well. Uh, another measure we, we're taking is uh, an aggressive public health awareness campaign for the tourism industry. That includes sharing the facts to the media, travelers, and public. 
uh, and the public. And this is an example of one of them. Uh, you know, we have been in constant discussion with CPG and PhD, especially the last few days on this um, about how do we really um, prevent mosquito infection. And as Dr. Fulton said, yes, today you have to prevent mosquito bites and prevent um, uh, mosquito breeding. Prevent mosquito breeding or salt reduction. So we agreed with CPG and PhD to embark on a joint enhanced sector control program. That just means reduce mosquito breeding size, reduce the source of mosquito. And we will re-emphasize what that means um, in a couple of minutes. And this will include the share of best practices with the industry via data teams like all of them. We also have joint and ongoing discussion with the CDC Travelers Health Branch and other agencies like PAHO, the Public Health Agency of Canada, Public Health Agency of England, um, with respect to travel advisories and so on. Um, we also have a new forum that was established um, in December 2015 for CATNET, which is the Caribbean Travel Health Network. And this was actually established with a network of public health agencies designed to rapidly share information on issues of public health concerns for travelers uh, to promote global health security. So currently in Tacnet we have the CDC, the USCDC, and the Public Health England as well as Public Health Agency of Canada. And we have very close, we, 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 one of the things we have discussions about um, we set the travel guidelines. So just to conclude, we really want to urge, especially for the travel industry, to uh, send that message of preventing mosquito bites and source reduction. For the travelers, we can tell them, stay and sleep in pre-loaded condition rooms or set up barriers, wear long clothes, shirts and long pants. And the same way, as uh, Dr. Putin said, a challenge for the hotels and get out to enhance, enhance measures for a club for multiple breeding. And all those measures are listed on the website and it's listed in the document that uh, we are providing. So thank you. Thank you, Doctors uh, Hospitalis and the Poulsen and in Indar. The very helpful information, and there will be backup information that'll be provided as well. Keep in mind, if you have Q and A, we will have a Q and A session, uh, and you should be submitting in writing to, uh, to through through the, uh, the, the the portal there uh, what you, what your questions are, and we'll we'll get to those shortly. Uh, our, our key partner in all of this, uh, the link to ministries of tourism, boards of tourism is the Caribbean Tourism Organization. I'd like to turn the uh, mic over to uh, Secretary General Riley. Uh, thank you, Frank. Right. Are you hearing me? Very hearing clearly. Me? Okay. Yes, uh, very clearly. Good. Our, uh, our role uh, is it's very straightforward. It's to, it's to engage the experts and the relevant authorities and, and of course, to get the facts. Um, to ensure that the necessary steps are being taken to protect the public and the public interest, and clearly uh, a part of the public interest. Excuse me, uh, if, if anyone is, is uh, any of the other presenters, please mute your, your line. So we're just listening to uh, Secretary General Riley. Um, part of the public interest, of course, is, is protecting the, uh, the economic well-being, of course, as well, uh, of the people of the Caribbean. Um, we have to inform our stakeholders and the public and keep them updated, and we have to provide all stakeholders with the relevant tools. Now, we've, we've uh, done that in several different ways, uh, which, which are uh, outlined by the previous speakers. So we've certainly been in constant contact with CARFA, because CARFA is the expert, and uh, CARFA, uh, Dr. Hospitalis and Dr. Indar and, and their colleagues have been in touch with their counterparts uh, in other parts of the world as well. Certainly the CHDA has kept us uh, engaged in what they're doing and we've done likewise. We've also been in touch though with the uh, with the cruise sector as well as the airlines. So the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association and the uh, and their counterpart uh, internationally which is CLIA, um, they've been engaged as well uh, and, uh, and we've reached out to IATA and to the United Nations World Tourism Organization and to the World Travel and Tourism Council. So the point is that a coordinated effort here uh, is, is, is in force because it is important to understand that this is not a Caribbean phenomenon. 
Uh, it is international, and heaven knows it could become global, but the fact is that it certainly affects the travel and, uh, and tourism public uh, everywhere. So uh, without repeating what has been said, the, uh, the CTO plays a coordinating role and is very clear on what we have to do to keep our members informed and engaged and what we have to do to support the efforts of our partners in making sure that there is prevention, control, and protection. And, and, and beyond that, we encourage people to go to our website, which is onecaribbean.org, and take a look at all of the facts that you need. The most important thing that we have to get across to our various publics is that we provide facts and guidelines in places where the experts want people to go to look for those facts and guidelines. Uh, and that said, I'm afraid I'm going to uh, have to uh, leave the call and, um, and get to the airport. But, but we are uh, available uh, through our website and through other means to answer questions and to stay engaged in this really critically important issue. Thank you. Thank you, you, uh, and uh, I'm going to actually be brief as well on on my presentation because I, I what I, what we really want to do is get to some Q and A and discussion around that. We will have a technical webinar next week, late next week, that will get much more into the details of of uh, mitigation, education, and 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 uh, collaboration. These are all key things that have to occur in this process. Um, you would have received, many of you would have received the communications to guests and the recommended communications, uh, the recommended uh, uh, guidelines for hotels, which uh, CARPA put together for us. And uh, uh, those will be ma made available afterwards. Uh, in, in, in a nutshell, they're, they're, they're good guidelines. Uh, I think uh, you can use them uh, and adapt them to your own situation in prevent presenting them to guests, the guidelines for travelers. Uh, I, I, while we want to be transparent and real with guests, we really need to also be uh, 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 cautious about creating, but not only to guests, but the media and, 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 the, and the broader uh, public, uh, a sense of panic. We just want to create a sense of readiness and response and a sense of assurance that indeed we're working on a number of fronts to make sure that, uh, that uh, we're creating as, as as, as safe an environment for, 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 for visitors and residents as possible. And I want to underscore that one point uh, in there as well. This is not a matter that we just direct at our guests. We really, to get to, to, to not only is it, is, is it appropriate, but also we need to get to our employees and get to our, 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 our surrounding communities to, to assist with the public awareness the, and the mitigation efforts that are so, so essential to be able to tackle this effectively. Um, so looking at the, uh, the hotel vector control areas, uh, there is a slide that will come up uh, uh, that speaks to some of the things that you can do to prevent uh, uh, the, uh, the spread of the, and, and, and the development of, of, of the, uh, the mosquito and, 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 and the challenge. There's some details in there. I'm not going to get into those. I think uh, you'll be able to read those with what we, what we uh, really send out. But suffice to say, they pretty much bucket around uh, several key areas, three key areas, and that is uh, in terms of uh, vector control, uh, eliminating any standing water anywhere. And that standing water, by the way, could be cracks in your pavement. It could be water that's uh, sitting under your refrigerators or on, under your uh, air conditioning, external air conditioning units. Uh, so it's, it's not just the traditional standing water that we find in pools and ponds and puddles. It's well beyond that. And then the other area is in fogging. And we'll get into some of the details of technical kinds of things that could occur in fogging later and, 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 and the options that exist with, with our webinar next week. Um, but uh, the, 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 and, and hand in hand with that is the misting of foliage. So there will be details around all of that that will be shared with you, and you have the mosquito prevention control list there. Uh, we put in a slide as well. The next slide, Adriana, please, of the on uh, a do-it-yourself home mosquito trap. There's all kinds of products and 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 and, and ways in which you can mitigate the the spread of the disease and its larvae and 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 and. and uh, and uh, those kinds of things will be available through our Caribbean Alliance for Sustainable Tourism. CHTA is developing a resource guide that we hope to at least uh, have, have, have ready at least in its first iteration for our next webinar late next week. 
So, um, uh, I mean, lo looking at, at, at the issue of, of, of handling, um, I, I just want to also point to the point, uh, point to a fact that we mentioned earlier, and it's not, not bulleted here, but co coordinated efforts locally are absolutely essential. As we've coordinated at a regional level, and we're, we, we're, we're continuing with that, we're really, and we've advised that through our press announcements as well that uh, were circulated yesterday, and we'll make sure that that's part of the follow-up material for you, that there be local coordinated efforts in the hotel tourism and, and the tourism sectors, both the public and private sectors, have had experience in, in affecting collaboration with health authorities and, and, and governments, and we really urge that you take the lead on doing that and convening and getting action at those levels. Through CHTA, CTO, and CARPA, we're also reaching out to the OECS and CARICOM to see if, you know, how we can better engage uh, leadership at that regional level as well. But in terms of handling cancellations, you've, you may have seen some of the policies that airlines are taking that they will uh, honor uh, cancellations, waive penalty fees, and so on for those who have been affected or, or, or are pregnant and could be traveling to the region. It's really options up to hotels how they want to handle this. Uh, it is a goodwill matter, uh, but uh, really at the at the maximum, a full refund and 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 goodwill around that will, will will generate other types of opportunities down the line as this thing mitigates itself. Uh, but beyond that, uh, some hotels have reported to us as well that they're offering uh, a, a, a later stay or, or or something like that, waiving penalties for a later stay or a transference uh, to someone else of, 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 of the stay. So those kinds of things need to be handled delicately because they certainly affect the impression and the image of the destination, of the Caribbean destination. In our external messaging, uh, we will share with you shortly a press release uh, that went out yesterday that, and, and, and you would have seen, some of you would have seen earlier the guidelines as well for uh, a joint statement that the CHDA and CTO have made but we've also created a joint press release that uh, went out to the media yesterday and, uh, and, 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 and to our membership, and we'll, we'll, we'll be circulating that more broadly as a follow-up to this. Upcoming training and information, uh, uh, the information from today will be circulated, the resource guide I mentioned, and we will start at least one technical webinar series, and that's geared towards general managers, operational managers, I think it'd be uh, certainly uh, uh, maintenance personnel, landscaping personnel, and certainly uh, it, there's, 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 there's value to having uh, HR personnel involved in that as well, because the HR personnel really have the ability to reach the employees. Uh, uh, CTO and CHTA are also speaking about uh, developing, and we would do it very quickly, some public service announcements that could be done, hopefully with CARPA with us as well, that could be... Uh, begin to be disseminated to the local press as well uh, to, to, to broaden that public en uh, engagement. So that's, that's, th those are my points at, these, at, this, at this juncture. Carolyn, I don't know if, as president if you wish to add any further point to that. If you do, uh, uh, please do. And, um, uh, well, let, go me, ahead. let me just, um, let me speak more from the perspective of having, you know, owning two resorts in St. Lucia and uh, also from the St. Lucia perspective what we've done there. Generally, I would like to encourage all hoteliers that are on the call that I think that, um, you know, sending a written communication to your staff is one thing, but I really would encourage that you actually convene meetings uh, with, your, with your teams because we have an opportunity to act quickly. Possibly the private sector can act a lot quicker than the public sector, and I think there's an opportunity to make our staff, our team members, the ambassadors that carry the message the message of how important it is to prevent mosquito bites and eradicate breeding grounds, carry that message home to their families but also the wider communities. Um, I think there's a real opportunity to start a, a cleanup campaign by explaining the importance and, and, and you know, to, to uh, look for, for standing water and, uh, you know, start really the campaign from that perspective. Even, um, again, St. Lucia is not on any list officially yet, but you know, with the publicity that the matter has had um, all over the world, nobody cares if an island is on the list or not. I mean, travelers are just wary of the information that reaches them. Um, the, the information does not really stress that the virus is harmless to those 
registered or not pregnant or planning a pregnancy, but clearly, uh, you know, all travelers at the moment are concerned about what's coming out in the news. Um, that's all I have to add for now. We are obviously, we had a good prevention program now on hotels, as, as I think most hotels have from the time we had to ban chikungunya, but uh, we certainly have reviewed all protocols and ensured that also we pay attention to whatever new products are out there in the marketplace. The Caribbean Alliance of Sustainable Tourism cast, um, we will try to also prepare a document that would showcase some of these products that have recently come out that might be worth looking at for further control measures. That's all I have to add for now. Thank you. Everybody there still? Hello? Uh, this is James. I'm here. Hello, hello, Frank. Thank you, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, I'm sorry, I was on mute there. But uh, uh, we will begin the Q and A part of this as as well. We've gotten quite a few questions from our 199 uh, participants in the webinar, and um, we'll get as many in as we can. Uh, we have one question. Uh, any of the presenters can respond. Uh, from uh, Anika Richards, if only one in four infected persons will develop symptoms, and if there is indeed a link between micro, I can't say that word yet, microcephalia and Zika, shouldn't this be a major source for concern since pregnant women could be infected and not show signs? Yeah. Well, Frank, I think okay. that is the big problem. That, that is the big problem for, for our own communities because we are fighting an enemy that we cannot necessarily see. Um, that is the the big issue. That is why the only the only solution is to eradicate mosquitoes to the extent possible and prevent bites as long as there is no vaccine. And I understand that um, a vaccine will probably not be developed for a number of years. Okay. Uh, this, 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 uh, by the way, mute if you're not talking. Yeah, this is James. Um, so yes, a uh, significant percentage of people infected with this virus show no symptoms, and therefore it's possible for a mother to be infected and not home. Based on what happened in Brazil, if this, this Zika virus, most people recover. Um, those who have symptoms have it mild, uh, but there ha we do have this big concern, the spike in microcephaly and the spike in neurological problems in some people, uh, a rare problem normally uh, as a result of this virus infection. We are tracking, part of our job at Corfa is to track every day, every week, the different illness patterns in the region and to uh, help countries understand when transmission is taking place or not. So at the moment, for the majority of countries, that worry is not as great. But it will go up as more spread slowly takes place. I hope slowly, not rapidly. Um, and it is a concern for the health ministers. We will be taking advice and policy positions to them and taking this to the level of heads of government to get very serious about mosquito control. Caroline, you're right. Uh, ultimately, it is. Uh, reducing mosquitoes to, to, to zero or near zero. And that's where the hotel and tourism industry can react faster in some ways in government. While we secure the high level commitment and resources, everyone, householders, hoteliers, have a responsibility to keep their places free from the breeding of the mosquitoes. Now, I'm going to uh, say that I've traveled a lot in the Caribbean all over for years, and many, many properties that I go to you're being bitten by uh, mosquitoes, and that is not acceptable. I'm a citizen of the region, but I'm also, so I'm often a traveler within the region. And we need to educate our staff and address a lot of misconceptions as well among staff uh, uh, about mosquitoes and change the attitude towards them, give them the tools, and we will work jointly with CPOCHQ to do that. In the meantime, we, we it's a new disease is evolving, so that close monitoring and watching it will be important to be, um, to be proactive. We have to avoid media amplification of, of the problem and be consistent in the messaging. Because we really, uh, uh, everyone on the call, we have a real challenge to 
the health and, and economic security of our region, I do believe, and, and particularly through the decline of tourism arrival, if this uh, is not managed properly. Over. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a quick question while, while you're on the line, Dr. Aspidal. Uh, can, can you get this disease more than once? Do we know that? That came from uh, Marcia Adams, Charles. As best we can tell, you can only get this disease once. And one of the reasons why it's so different in this part of the world is we've, we've not had it before. So it's attacking all age groups. If you're in Africa where it comes from, you would get it when you're young, before you're, you're of childbearing age, or before you're of an age where it may cause a neurological complication. So, uh, but here it's behaving differently because we haven't had it, so everyone's getting it. A uh, question from, um, from Thora Brown. Uh, is there anything you can eat that would make your blood less attractive to mosquitoes? <laughs> You'd be a multimillionaire if you could figure that one out. <laughs> Maybe there is, and, and there's a number of folk remedies. Uh, as the Carbon Public Health Agency, I want to stick to things that are proven uh, and recommended by the CDC and other competent public health authorities. So, Frank, is that my cue, because I'm not part of the public health agency, to, to just um, mention some of the folk remedies? And as Dr. Hospitalis said, this is folklore. Nobody knows whether they are working, but uh, vitamin B has been brought up as a possible um, uh, ingredient that may make you less tasty to mosquitoes, um, eating garlic. But again, this is not proven. This is folklore, and we need to be careful with disseminating such information. Yeah, we, we've seen it out there, and, and I think uh, I think the, 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 the advice from Dr. Hospitalis is, 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 is what I think we've got to adhere to as much as possible, because we will hear all of that, and there may be merit to it and, and may not be, but we, we really need to, from our point of view, uh, go, go through with what, uh, what, what are proven and approved remedies or methods of control and so on. A question, um, a qu question came in from uh, Bob Winter. Is it advisable that hoteliers drain their decorative pond areas? Hoteliers uh, should have systems of monitoring and managing standing water and stored water so that they are not breeding mosquitoes. If you've got decorative ponds with tropical fish in it, you don't have to worry. That's a very effective management strategy. If you have tanks and drums for other reasons and you have them well covered, that's an effective learning strategy. So uh, that, that's a, a, a short answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a question from Samantha Slattery. Is it not fair that the Caribbean is being bunched together? The majority of our islands do not have Zika. So it is important that we can show which islands are Zika-free. How are we going to do this? Um, my, 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 I have some bias and caution on that. I think we've got to be careful because my, 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 my assumption is that the, the Zika virus is probably in most of our jurisdictions already. Uh, comments from other presenters? Well, I, I it's unlikely that the virus is in most cases already. We have, um, at CARFA, we have uh, hundreds of monitoring sites and systems of, of triggering suspicion and taking blood samples and coordination with the regional airlines. So every day of week in the last uh, few weeks, actually since about September of last year, uh, member states and public health and ministries of health have been begun to send specimens to question, could this be Zika, could this be Zika. So far we have of course confirmed Suriname, Haiti, but a lot of other countries I don't, it's just, if it's there, it's not quite correct. Um, and eventually, though, other countries will get it. I think which are Zika free will eventually become a moot point. Uh, what's more interesting and a challenge is down the line. So right now, uh, CDC has a Barbados at level two, and um, for example, or, or Puerto Rico. At what point will we be able to say it is there is no more transmission? It's Zika free. Is this going to stay in place forever? Um, while I have the line, our, our other worry besides the microcephaly and the, the birth defects, which as was said earlier is a serious issue, 
is this potential neurological link. And if they extend their travel advisory beyond um, young women who are childbearing to a broader uh, group of people, then it could hurt us even more. And so we want to be with them in the negotiation of whatever they say about that when it comes out. This is another rare disease that goes up, it seems, about six-fold after people have Zika virus infection, whereas the microcephaly goes up about 20-fold after Zika virus passes through a population. Both rare conditions, but they go up. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this may be a question for our technical uh, session next week, but in the past, government has said that the dangers of fogging are far more uh, are far more than the benefits, since the poison ends up in our waters due to watershed. That question is from Brian Fronten. From a public health point of view, fogging is recommended in certain situations. Uh, for example, in a community where you actually have a fever and a transmission of dengue or chikungunya or Zika, Fogging is indicated to knock down any female individual type of people that might be infected and then go on to fight someone else. Uh, householders, hoteliers also would have a role in, in that kind of situation. Uh, fogging is often generally not recommended if you don't have much transmission going on and just to control mosquitoes. Fogging to control mosquitoes from a nuisance point of view, a hotel property is a diff it's different uh, issue that's not so much, a, uh, uh, it could be just as a nuisance control rather than than, than public health. It getting into the water courses, uh, perhaps the chemicals that we use are not, uh, say, like DDT of years ago, uh, but they do have harmful effects. Sometimes you see declines in bee production, in, in honey production, because of impact on honey beehives. If, if farmers are not uh, covered up, warm enough to cover up their, their beehives. Thank you. Uh, question from uh, Delano Franks Sabejo. Uh, what is done by the government to prevent an outbreak on the island? In his area, we have monthly mosquito prevention program with 70 traps to prevent breeding outbreaks of mosquitoes. I would imagine he's, he's referencing, uh, you know, what, what, what more can be done by the government and what is being done. Um, yeah. uh, I, my, my understanding is that, uh, that uh, governments have stepped up efforts. They're, be, they're realizing the severity of it. I got reports from the Bahamas yesterday that, uh, that they have already commenced with uh, extensive fogging and, and public awareness and education. Uh, these are the kinds of things that I believe as uh, stakeholders, national hotel and tourism associations, industry leaders, and, um, and, and, and ministry, uh, ministries of tourism and boards of tourism, we have the ability to convene and, 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 and broker discussions and meetings with the health authorities and the heads of state and so on around local strategies and, 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 and the allocation of resources. Uh, there are resources that have, have to be applied to this to, to, to step up mitigation efforts by the private sector. And, and, and the public sector uh, has to do likewise. And, and there's every indication that, that, that that's, that's moving in that direction. Uh, we need to move faster, obviously, per, per the points that were made earlier. I don't know if the other panelists wish to add any further to that comment. I think that's a great comment. Um, uh, I, I think governments are beginning to really realize the trend and seriously gearing up. And, the conversation between regional and getting the synergy between regional and national effort and then at, on the ground and the important role that the Hotel and Tourism Association play absolutely agree to educate their staff, to make sure the environment, and then for us all to be consistently messaging um, within, within the region and, and also uh, to the traveling public. Very good. Thank you. Um, a question here from Colleen Sullivan. It is said that pregnant women shouldn't travel to the Caribbean, and those in childbearing years shouldn't travel. Should should consider not traveling as well. Is that too broad? What are the facts? We talked to it a little bit earlier, but I, I think given the, uh, the the that that's underscoring uh, the, the the large amount of fear that's out there in the public, uh, it warrants a, a, some further comment. The CDC travel advisory talks to uh, taking enhanced precautions to avoid mosquito bites, that's their level two, 
advise me if a woman who are pregnant um, be, and to consider uh, uh, maybe not doing the trip or take medical advice if you don't have to. Uh, so that's how it's nuanced. It does not say don't travel. Okay, here's a, here's a question, uh, and certainly uh, from a hotelier perspective, it'd be great to get some comment on it. A pregnant guest cancels their stay less than 30 days before their holiday. The hotel can charge a full cancellation fee, should they. Tour operators are charging the hotel, and the ho hotel has to take the hit. That's from Jean Marc Flambert. Is that fair? Is there another way around it? Carolyn, do you have any further comment on that? Um, from our own perspective, we refunded all such. We, we had a few pregnant women booked, and they wished to cancel on the advice of their doctors. And even though they were within the cancellation penalty, uh, uh, we refunded. Uh, or suggested um, we gave them the option to postpone their trip, but if they were not willing to make such a commitment, we did refund. It is different from hotel to hotel, but uh, you know, I mean, it, it is such an emotionally laden message that's been sent out. Uh, how can you not refund if such a request is made? I would find it morally wrong um, in this point um, to 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 hold on to the deposit unless the guest is comfortable with rescheduling uh, a visit later on. Thank you, and and we will be reaching out more to tour operators and others to to get a read on on this and and to to see if there can be some common ground on on how cancellations. We're going to have to wrap up in a few minutes. Uh, the question has to come up as to whether other hotels are experiencing cancellations and how are they handling it. We've talked a little bit about that. There are CHDA is doing an outreach to determine the extent to which there have been cancellations. We know that there have been cancellations. Uh, uh, there hasn't been a a, 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 an incredible groundswell, but it, it's out there enough to certainly garner our atten attention and concern in all of this. Um, Adriano, are we? Do we have time for any more questions? No. Two more quick questions. Here's a question from Kishma Breezy. Uh, is more for the medical authorities. Is there any insight with regards to the evolution of the illness caused by the mosquitoes? Why has there been a sudden increase from 1947 to 2014? Why is this all something just emerging on us so, so rapidly, actually, with, with a vengeance in the past three or four weeks? Many the conditions have been changing globally uh, for mosquitoes, um, uh, but also there is an enormous amount of human movement. Mosquitoes transmit the disease from person to person, but it is people who are infected moving from one area to another and meeting new mosquitoes there and starting new chains of transmission. That's how the disease moves. So we see the same pattern with dengue centuries ago, perhaps in slave trade. And then chikungunya, the same pattern of coming out of East Africa through uh, the Indian Ocean and Southern Asia, and then jumping in, in the case of chikungunya to St. Martin to enter the Caribbean and the Americas, and in the case of, 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 of uh, uh, Zika now coming up from the south and through South America. A mosquito-borne disease, a new disease, so we also have to keep a close eye and monitor and, and research what as this evolves. Uh, but it's clear that it's a yet another warning flag that we have to get really serious, and that's the message really passing to heads of state about mosquito control, in which hotels, health centers, and hospitals, courts of entry, and schools or right, top priority to keep uh, zero tolerance for, from mosquitoes, which means the community nearby, the community nearby also needs to be involved. And many of our hotels in the Caribbean, we're, we're right in the community or near to, and it's a slight range of the mosquito, which is like 200 meters. So you can't only think about your property, you have to think about 200 meters around you, uh, and who's next door, and, and really we are our neighbor's keepers. Uh, and maybe some of the governments will toughen up the things and so on that they're, they're having. But to answer the question, it's the amount of travel and tourism, the solid waste situation, and mosquitoes are breeding everywhere. Um, those are some of the contributory factors uh, to, 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 to the, the, the spread of these diseases. And with, with, with climate change and global warming, that's not good either. We've shown that it's going higher up the mountains, it's deeper into the forest in the last 20 to 30 years. So the mosquito itself has also evolved. Over. 
Thank you, Dr. Dr. Asphodel. Uh, I mean, this just underscores the the really importance of reaching uh, not only doing what we can do within our own environment, but also educating and 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 and, and, and helping our our employees, not only just our guests, uh, to be uh, prepared to uh, to and to practice mitigation and be prepared, be aware of the, the facts around this, but also the un uh, opportunity it presents us as as businesses to reach. Right beyond our, our, our immediate environment, and uh, and 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 to engage uh, that has broader ramifications and positive impact on on, on, on our businesses and and our, our, our the, the the environments that we we, we, we live and work in. Um, that I think we're going to have to wrap it up at this point. But we want to thank uh, certainly uh, all of this inf the, the, this information will be made available within 24 hours, as well as some additional support information from CARFA, CTO, and CHTA. Uh, we want to thank doc, uh, from CARPA, uh, the doctors Hospitalis, Polson, and Indar. Incredible information and great resources. We really appreciate it. Uh, from CTO, Mr. Riley, and also from CHTA, our president, Caroline Trobetsky. Um, uh, stay tuned. There will be information coming out shortly uh, regarding the technical webinar that uh, we're hoping to schedule for next Thursday or Friday. We welcome any further individual comments or feedback to us beyond the questions that we received uh, uh, directed to CHTA. Thank you so much. Thank you. And as we close out, uh, keep your eyes open for our new mobile phone game, Zaka Pico, that teaches people how to destroy the breeding site. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you, Frank. Thank you all. Right.